Hello, it's uh, Travis and Victor from VTTV Live. Um, we recorded some footage from a Destiny tournament last week. Um, who do we have playing here, Victor? Well, so today we have for, uh, this is round two of a weekly Destiny tournament hosted at Face to Face Games. Uh, on the left, we have uh, Chris Trombley, who's a, is a very good player in the Toronto area. Of course, this is being hosted in Toronto. And on the right is Peter, who uh, is actually a very experienced Akbar Luke player. In fact, this is the, he, he almost plays nothing except yeah. Luke Akbar, yeah. He was playing it, I think, before I really saw it online. Right now. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was through him, actually, that I discovered, uh, discovered how powerful this uh, combination of characters were. And of course, Chris is playing uh, Django Veers, which, uh, as we all know now, is a top tier competitive deck. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we put that together before it started being everywhere on the internet. But, yeah, uh, I, I feel kind of bad about that, like thinking I had such a bright idea and then all of a sudden, like now everybody else has done it. And so, you know, the, the people who discovered it first kind of got drowned out in all the all that nonsense. So anyway, uh, it looks like uh, Peter won the initiative there and he started with a force training on Luke. So force training, uh, you need to spot a blue character, of course, but uh, puts it on Luke because I think you, in this deck you just want to load everything up on Luke, sure. and then Akbar is just your support character. Yeah. And uh, then Chris uh, responds by putting a holdout blaster, has ambush, of course, on General Veers, rolls out, looks to be a very powerful roll of uh, four total da uh, range damage. Uh, of course, he needs to pay one resource to He has the resource there in the roll as well. Yeah. He, uh, Chris put the two shields on Django. Yep. Uh, I'm always a little hesitant. I'm never quite sure how I want to distribute the shield because, yep. uh, I mean, burning down Django is still, uh, burning down Veers first is still going to be a pretty effective way to take away the tempo for this deck. So, uh, not putting any upgrades, maybe because, <laughs> didn't put any upgrades on Django and did it on Veers instead because, like, the, the ambush on Holdout Blaster is a bit wasted when you're not wanting to activate uh, Django right away. Sure. Instead is response, you, you can so. still put it on Django and activate yeah, Veers. Okay, so Chris, just right now, he played uh, He Doesn't Like You, which removes a die of the opponents. Of course, you have to remove one of your own. Uh, removes that one of uh, Luke's dice, uh, of course, has a very powerful two and three damage side. So if you can get that away before any sort of focus nonsense comes into into play, then uh, you can sort of mitigate the, the high burst damage that the Luke Akbar deck is capable of. Uh, so yeah, five damage uh, going straight onto Luke. I was gonna try to burn him down as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's a good strategy. I mean, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, and especially like myself too, when I play against Luke Akbar, I try to go after the weaker character, of course, which Akbar, because uh, if you get rid of Akbar, then you don't have to worry about his focus as much. You don't have to worry about leadership, which allows you a rebuy on on Luke's activation in the same turn. Um, but as you're doing that, like Luke is just getting more and more upgrades on him, and then you still have to deal with him eventually. Yeah. Right. So Chris, Chris claims the battlefield here. Yep. Uh, didn't play anything from his hand though, so I guess he didn't have a cheap thing to play out. And so that leaves Peter free to do, uh, you know, a couple more actions. So took some shields. Yep, shields up, shields up, Luke. That's a good play there. Uh, this this deck, this this Luke Akbar deck, I I know it well. It was actually featured on the Knights of Ren podcast. This particular build deck sure. that Peter's playing today. And uh, it's very defensive. Like it has two dug-ins. It's got two defensive stances, as we just saw. Uh, it has two field medics, and it has a lot of dice. Not not dice mitigation so much, but like health mitigation. So three damage. Uh, yeah. So burn the shield. Force to switch away. Yeah. Dice. So starting to starting to put some damage on Django. Best defense, maybe. Okay, so did, did you see what uh, Peter discarded just then? Uh, I don't know if Chris discarded one. I don't know if Peter discarded one. He kept okay. the two that he had. Yeah, so... Because he played three cards, so he right. didn't discard any. So I think what Peter's going to do now is maybe overwrite um, this force training with either Luke's lightsaber or the lightsaber. Well, although he did put a raised staff to the front of his hand, so he might be considering that just to get, you know, the, the quantity of dice out into Luke. The, the danger, though, is like when you when you play out uh, an upgrade and leave yourself with no money, especially with upgrades that require 
money for you to to resolve one of their sides, then you know you've effectively given yourself an extra play. Now this is this is interesting here. What uh, Chris is doing. Normally you put all the upgrades on Django and then you just wait until your opponent activates something and then you just get a free giant roll. But we see here he's like putting all the all the upgrades on Veers instead. Perhaps it's because like you know Luke's first uh, attack went after Django, so he's sort of given away that that's priority target as it should be. You know, so it decides that Veers is gonna be the one that lives longer. And well, he also started with the the hold up blaster, so if he did switch directions on. Uh, Fears. Yep. Uh, he'd be able to pass it off. Okay, so uh, Luke rolled out and Django activated in response. Uh, Luke has special on force training, which of course allows you to choose any two of gaining a shield, gaining a resource, and dealing a damage. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think mean, that's he, a. He could take a resource and put a. Uh, sorry. Uh, put a damage on Django, yeah. take a resource on Akbar, and put a lightsaber on Akbar. Yeah, I mean, if especially, I don't know if I see, I don't think I see leadership in, in Peter's hand. So if he had that as well, well, then he could also activate Luke a second time this turn. Uh, but I think it's it's just a bunch of upgrades. We do see another use of force. And there's another defensive stance that have in there. Uh, yep. Survival here, and then Luke's lightsaber and regular lightsaber. So it looks like a discard for a reroll on Luke's second die. Uh, and it's a focus. Okay, this is a decent one because focus, uh, especially if you're going to roll the Akbar dice this turn, then you can turn Luke's one focus into Akbar's two focus, and you can use that to to change the remaining two dice whatever you want. Uh, Another four damage showing. Yep. Okay, and so now, now uh, sort of nerfing the the jetpacks. Modifier dice by changing Veer's uh, actual damage dice to real here. here. Interesting, he's playing a thermal vengeance. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that as being too common, especially with the how, how quickly a lot of people focus down Django. But this is a really huge roll for Chris here. This looks like to be a six damage, six or seven damage. I can't tell. Yeah, potentially. And uh, Akbar rolls out. Uh, one discard, which isn't very good, and then here's uh, yeah, six damage onto onto uh, Luke Skywalker, burning those those three shields away. So Luke now sitting at eight damage, of course, out of his twelve. So four more damage to Luke will uh, will remove him from the game, leaving a unupgraded Akbar and two actually very healthy opponents on Chris's side. Yeah, he'll put some more damage out on Django, but. So the, the tempo is definitely not in, in Peter's favor right now. Um, he could try to maybe discard to re-roll yeah, the focus dice here. And so actually this is this is an amazing roll here, this amazing re-roll. So I don't know if Chris has any, like, he doesn't like use or any sort of dice mitigation. He does have one resource, so Electroshock could be an option if he has it in his hand. Doesn't look like he's got anything. No, so uh, if this goes unmolested, then we're looking at a potential... Um, so six it looks yeah, well, even more than six damage, right? Well, because seven. yeah, seven damage here, which quite wouldn't be quite enough to finish off either Django or Veers, but put him in a very precarious position. Sorry, there's a there's a plus two uh, melee on uh, the force training. On the force training, yeah. So now we see a Duggan from Chris uh, splitting up the shields there, um, putting one Princess. shield on Veers, yeah, because now you want to protect him a little bit because he has a bunch of upgrades and uh, he's looking at a bunch of damage coming his way at one character. So, oh, I, I wouldn't do this. Well, you wouldn't resolve the focus now. Yeah, no, I would resolve the focus. Um, yeah, I guess I guess you're only yeah. losing one damage. You could get no. Actually, this is the same amount of damage. But those are two threes, right? Six, and then he uses force training to give himself to do the one damage plus whatever else he wants. Well, the shield. Yeah. So throw six damage onto Django uh, with a two shields. Uh, that's four damage, and then. I think that's Veer's resolving, was it? One, one shield onto Django in response. So Peter looks like he's going to do a damage and maybe put a shield on it? Yeah, put a shield on that uh, loop there. And here comes the backup muscle, the, uh, the finisher for all yellow villain decks. Probably one of the best supports in the game here. And that's going to sort of allow maybe Chris to not uh, require so much of his attack dice to go against Luke, or if Luke shields up, I mean, this is still uh, one damage short if 
even if all the backup muscle damage got used. Yeah. So Luke, Luke is in danger of dying, but there's still one more field medic. I th he did use a field medic earlier in this game, right? I don't right? think so. No? I think we just talked about it, but yeah, there's still two field medics, so uh, that can be something that's really frustrating for the backup muscle player if he's spending two or three turns that's trying right. to kill I think kill he's got to replace that those two damage with the three, not another one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I do that often, too, actually, just like... I get confused when I when I switch switch nope. the damage to. No, no, it should be. Uh, well, it was at eight, right? And now it should be at nine. Yeah, yeah. So we can't we can't actually fix the game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so used to doing live commentary, that, uh, <laughs> not being able to go over the table is a little strange. Okay, going to the next round. I think yeah, it looks like Peter had claimed the battlefield earlier, so he's going to be able he's to also take the grab first that action. Dice. Yeah, yeah, that would be embarrassing if he didn't take it. Well, at, at least he removed the horse training dice. Sure. I'm sure he'll remember when he actually gets to rolling. So Peter drew a Force Misdirection and a Deflect. So those are two really good uh, defensive cards for for Peter. For force Misdirection, maybe not so much, because there's not a lot of... Um, well, he has no ranged sides anymore on uh, Luke's dice now that he got rid of the Force Training. But he does do a defensive stance onto Luke. So now um, Chris, if he, if he wants to kill... Luke, he's going to need to do six damage here. It's very possible with the dice he has. Yeah, yeah. Let, that's the one thing. That's the one thing about Django Veers, right? Like, um, just the insane amount of damage comes out of nowhere because of the consistency of the, the die faces on both characters. So rolling out, uh, this is a huge damage uh, roll, and so I think maybe Chris trying to. <laughs> And this is a relatively weak roll in response by, by Django here. Uh, so if he has, he doesn't like you, or, yep, unpredictable. Gets one shield, uh, but I see that's still six damage coming through, so unless uh, Chris has something else, then I think uh, Django's going down this turn. I don't know if I'd roll uh, yours yet. I think you roll Veers because you want to kind of pressure Peter to do something other than the obvious play, which is to kill off Django. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks like his roll wasn't that great. I mean, we do see a jetpack jet special, uh, and that's going to just force Peter to use his melee sides right now. But aside from that, there isn't a lot of counter pressure from Chris's roll here. Uh, so, yeah, looks like he's going to try to finish Django off. So that's all well and good, but meanwhile, it, it's been Veers that's been getting all the upgrades. Yeah. And, you know, th that being said, though, it's it's not like uh, it's going to be a easy trade. Um, interesting Luke's, to see how he's yeah. going to re-roll. Yeah, that, that makes sense, too. I mean, he used all his melee sides, yeah. so the jetpack special doesn't make any sense. So he actually gets a decent... Um, I, might, I might have used a disrupt. Oh, yeah, just to prevent, like, any sort of deflect yeah. action or anything like that. Yeah, which we're going to see right now. Getting rid of maybe the jet... No, that yeah. makes sense. Get rid of the veers. There's uh, another resource here, either. Yeah. He doesn't have dice to get it. No resource, yeah. So he's going to have to re-roll again, discarding another card. And this time we see... Uh, well, he, he got a damage side on his holdout blaster. And actually, he now he has damage. a... Just yeah, a fatal, damage. Just fatal damage. Yeah. So now, now it's on Peter... Like, he can't even put another shield on him because he's at his max. So he needs to either have a use the force, but he doesn't even have any money. So I think that's it. He's just going to put a shield on Akbar and accept the trade here. So this was actually a for fortunate turn of events for Chris here. Um, and and at this point, we're going to see that um, now we have a fully loaded Django versus yeah. a uh, naked Akbar. No, no, at least he gets the lightsaber. Yeah. But but Akbar is going to start out at eight life because that backup muscle is coming for him. That's fine. We still got a we still got the uh, roll here. There might be some damage on Jack and Veers. Yeah. So maybe at this point. There you go. Yeah, but there's no. Well, yeah, and he has the resource too. So. Uh, that's. Oh, that's. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to throw all that stuff at him. Not yet. But he all might. Right. Yep, so it puts the shield on Veers, and then he's going to take three damage, uh, still sitting at a good spot. I think maybe at this point, uh, Chris might want to think about uh, getting rid of some of those jetpacks, like upgrading to them to some other uh, some other things. He avoids well, the backup dam uh, backup muscle because he wants to take... Oh, claim player. the battlefield, yeah. Because you want to roll out first. Like, you never know, right? You could just yeah. get, like, a roll that will kill Akbar before he has a chance to respond. Just have a field medic in hand, so... He has some mitigation. Yeah, 
and and it let's see it if uh, if Chris gets the god roll, uh, Phil Maddox's not gonna not gonna save him because he could probably he could potentially get ten damage with this roll here. Uh, does not get ten damage and four uh, damage. Yeah, four damage and two jetpack specials. That's what that was actually the thought I was gonna the, the was gonna side, finish. That, uh, yeah, I mean there is a lightsaber on the other side of the board, but um, that's why. Yeah. So we're looking at what three damage to Akbar plus two jetpack specials. Um, Chris doesn't really need to do anything until Peter activates. Uh, yeah, and then the, then we'll probably throw one damage on to onto Akbar, or he might wait until until um, Peter uses field medics. He might suspect that he has it in his hand. But now I guess Peter is trying to decide maybe if he wants to put a, another upgrade on Akbar. Um, that that Ray staff doesn't look very appealing right now just because of that jetpack. Well, I think he just needs to. But yeah, he has to do it. So, oh man, oh, dug in. Man, a Duggan was a card that I completely underestimated at the start of the game. I just didn't think three shields would... It, it, at the time, I was playing decks with, like, diplomatic immunity and stuff like that, and so I just thought those were so much better. But, like, uh, when it comes out of nowhere, yeah, it's huge. And uh, now we're going to see um, him get rid of those dice. But, unfortunately, Veers can't put any more, any more shields on him. So it's not going to be that efficient, but, you know... At, at least you're not taking an extra damage like you would if you just let this happen. Yeah. Yeah. So now Akbar is forced to just take one resource. Take damage. Uh, might be a reroll, yeah. Just to maximize that damage turn. Try nope. To. Another shield. Like, he, I don't think you want to play, maybe he doesn't want to play any of these other cards in his hand. Do I claim here just so I'm not going last? But yeah, Peter, Peter might pass. be hoping to... I, I think this is I think this is not I don't, I efficient don't. use of a reroll here. What what Chris is doing? But you know There's what? No he's, reason not to. he's so far ahead it doesn't matter. Yeah, you could you can afford to do these. Uh, he's not going to be playing another upgrade. Plays. He doesn't really have anything else to do with the cards. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, three damage. Yeah. So two on Akbar. Here comes a field medic, perhaps or willpower even. I think willpower might be. Get the spot blue for willpower. No. Oh, oh maybe you do actually. I, I can't don't know. All right. All right. Yeah, back up muscle, back up. At least Peter will be able to go first now. Yeah. This means his dice will get removed immediately. But I mean, he could just, it could be just one swing when he can't do anything about it. Yeah. I mean, even he discards the leadership because it's useless now. And I guess I guess it's not spot blue for willpower since he kept it in his hand. Yeah. Now, see, now 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 that Luke is dead, there's all these like cards you just don't want to draw anymore. I just saw him draw at least one binds all things. Uh, looks like two binds all things actually. I can't I can't see what the third card is. Uh, looks like a blue upgrade card. But um, that's just definitely, especially when you're in a back foot like this, it's not not what you want. That's not the roll that he needed. No, and then here comes here comes Veers with all his damage faces. Yeah, doesn't disappoint this time. No. And I don't think there's any dice mitigation here that can help him. I think that's it. Eight damage. Seven damage. Um, yeah, looks like it. Three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. I mean, I think I think Veers has the edge and speed here. Luke, Luke yeah. can definitely go fast enough, um, but like, some of those rolls are, are just crazy. Yeah, will willpower. So now, now Veers won't kill him with this roll, um, but with the but he does have backup muscle. So I think I think once yeah, Chris steals also, eight here two, and two more shields once yeah. they're gone. So he's going to, yeah, resolve all the damage faces. And I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, no, look, it was seven damage, actually. Uh, field medic here. Yeah. Removing two, going back down to five damage. Yeah, it's just, uh, this and is then just... backup muscle. But then that's all, that's basically all of Peter's um, damage mitigation here. Barring some, like, just really yeah. terrible rolls. So Peter's going to have to pitch his entire hand here, I think. I mean, I don't even want to play that second lightsaber. So now he's back at six damage. Yeah. 
I mean, I would play this the second lightsaber. I would yep. overwrite the staff. Um, so yeah, you were, you were saying earlier about um, Luke Luke not being too like fast enough for Django Veers, and I think I think you're right. But on the other hand, um, I've been playing Django Veers a little bit lately myself, and I think that. Like, variance is definitely a, a big thing. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, I think it's slightly slower, but yeah. it definitely has a, a reasonable shot. Yeah. And it's interesting seeing this game where Chris just decided to load up Veers instead of Django. Yeah. Uh, it could just be that he started with a holdout blaster, then saw that Django was getting targeted, didn't know how much time he had left before. Yeah. Uh, Django pass so just decided to put everything on here which is a smart move because then your opponent is forced to think about well you know should I switch my targets I've already um, I've already uh, spent a couple of resources trying to bring Django shields down and deal damage to him but now that I have a scary Veers end game Veers here you know what do I do now yeah it is a uh that's a, just a lot, a lot of damage dice. There's yeah. not very much you're going to be able to do here. So at this point, uh, nobody's claimed the battlefield, right? We're still... I don't yeah. know if Chris, Chris, is, Chris is waiting to use his shield to yeah. see if he does damage first. Okay, so this is like, yeah, focus, trying to get some damage through those through those shields there. Might as well take a resource here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, one damage now is Chris, going to do anything. Now Chris claims the battlefield. Yeah. I guess he yeah, might I think you have to. Or just, you could even wait, oh, there, okay, <laughs> didn't see the impractical in his hand, but, yep. Oh, and that's, that's, well, that's not, no. I mean, you get rid of all the shields, but then Crystal has that two-shield dive from, one the, shield. from the jetpack, yeah, effectively is what you're doing. But then, this this has the benefit of at least uh, Peter being able to claim the ba battlefield, right, if Chris wants to put two shields back on. Sure. Yep, so... Move one, and then Peter's probably gonna claim here. Yeah. Or, oh no! Oh yeah, and he gets. What, he gets what's this he, he gets this Oh right, okay, okay, because he did claim Battlefield. Sorry, I thought that was just an action. Okay, and Chris, Chris uh, swaps a holdout blaster for a much more lethal blaster rifle. So I mean, Peter's chance, only the real chance here is <laughs> just the god rolls roll. terribly. Yeah. Well, uh, the maximum amount of damage uh, Peter can do here is seven. Yeah, I, I think I saw him with a dug in. So. Yeah. Well, you saw Peter with the dug in. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, uh, that might what not. What else he has? That might not help. So he's gonna probably roll out Akbar first, and then see what Beers rolls, and then either dug in or apply the damage as necessary. So two focus, that's a decent start. You can ch change those both into three damage sides. And here comes uh, Chris's, Chris's... We can change them both into uh, unblockable, yeah. so he doesn't have to worry about the shields. So a lucky break a little bit for Peter here. Lots of modifiers, but no actual ranged damage sides. So he's going to use this opportunity to put three shields onto, onto Akbar. He slides four damage in and under the shields now. Yep. That just means he needs one more lightsaber. Yeah. In a future turn. So. Oh. Okay. He discarded. Um, what was it? Arm to the teeth. I keep getting excited when I see that card getting played, but then I realize you need a yellow character. And there's oh two unblockable damage. Not quite enough to kill him just yet. Uh, still no actual range damage for those modifiers to leech off. So we're going to see a two focus here. Uh, yep, resolving. Is it a plus two side for the lightsaber? I think yeah. so. Yeah. I went, why wouldn't you just go with two uh, oh, man. unblockable? Yeah. So you modify both. Yeah. You yeah. slide them under the shield. I agree. And you can, yeah, you don't need to pay money for yeah. it for whatever damage mitigation. But it doesn't matter now. Because oh, right. he played, he doesn't like you. I mean, it's always easy when you're sitting back and just commentating on Oh, yeah, for sure. Say, like, when should you're, do this, should do this. Yeah. Well, when you're in the moment, it's, it's a little bit harder, for sure. So, More resources, just for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, props to Peter for putting up such a valiant fight, which is weird because I remember the couple of games I lost playing Ak Akbar Luke when Luke died really early. Like, Akbar's tenacious. Well, if you get some light spite, light yeah. sabers on him, and you have the heals and you have the dug ins, you can stick around for a little yeah. while. It, it's a question of tempo, though, right? Like, cause this the the last five or so minutes of this game have just been completely, you know, Peter sort of responding to uh, Chris's aggression. Right, so back at muscle, yeah. so his so, first action next turn, he kills him. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's So, I mean, there's not much you can do. That. Yeah, they can see. Yeah. So, it was a good match. Um, I mean, I don't think Chris plays again, so we can safely say that uh, Chris goes on to be undefeated. Yeah. So, he went 3-0. Um, so, yeah. Well, uh, we have a, another one more uh, match from this tournament that we'll be doing. All right. Uh, so, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah, see you in round three.